Hello everybody, Gamer Penny here bringing you another episode of our Final Fantasy 14 online let's play and we're back with Vesper. Um, today we're gonna try to get to the next and last alliance raid for Stormblood. Um, I remember these quests being pretty lengthy in between and the last one took a full episode so we'll see if we get to it today or next episode uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try to get to it. Let's, let's check this out here. Question is, then, where exactly did Ramza and his fellowship journey next? Ah, Vesper, to what do we owe this unexpected visit? I had not planned on summoning you for another several turns of the sun. I forget why we came back. <laughs> I apologize if we have caused you any worry. I suppose one cannot allow a reporter in the midst and not expect her to report what she sees. Though I did expect a tad more discretion from Miss Murilla. Murilla? Alma has, as of late, been experiencing difficulties with her health. Chirurgeons have been called upon to discern what exactly it is that ails her, but as far as they can tell, there is nothing physically wrong with my sister. The consensus is the rigors of an extended stay in a foreign land have taken their toll on her fragile heart. Yeah, right. Hold on, I'm having some mouse issues. I don't know what the problem is. It's stuck somewhere. Oh, I see. Hold on. <laughs> stuck on my step. Uh, Vesper, when did you- Oh, Alma! Alma! I'm fine, brother. It is obvious you are not. You must return to your chambers and rest. Forgive me. Perhaps we shall speak again once I regain my strength. Until then, please, look after my father. Hmm. Now then, where were we? Ah yes, the matter of our next expedition. Really? That's all you got to say about this? As we discovered during our most recent foray into the Esther Sands, the Dalmascan capital of Rabinaster appears to lie upon the ruins of what can only be the royal city of Lesalia, ancient capital to the lost kingdom of Evilis. Shortly after, we stumbled across remnants of a legendary clockwork city of Gaug, cleverly repurposed into a lighthouse overlooking the R Ritterana Cataract, remnants which now sit suspended above the fathomless chasm. Lasalia, Gaug, what have they in common, you ask? I shall tell you. They both appear in my ancestor's account of the rise of Evilis, the Durai Papers. And with each new discovery, this forbidden chronicle is now proving Evolution legend to be more fact than fairy tale. There's no denying the proof. It is but a matter of time before scholars and historians from across the realm come to the same conclusions. But as you are all aware, my aim has never been to simply prove the existence of Evilis. No, I shall not rest till I have revealed the truth of Yun Ramja's role in King Delita's ascension, and cleared my ancestor Oran Durai of the false accusations made against him by the church. Should we not see to Alma first? Kagani's Chirurgians have had would have us believe she is in no immediate danger, as her illness is not one of the body but of the mind. To borrow their words, her spirit is in a state of unbalance and merely requires time to right itself. Hmm. I feel like you should be more concerned. Alma will be fine as long as she remains in bed. The last thing she needs is any further excitement, especially at the paws of these meddlesome mole bats. <laughs> the Moogles. <laughs> Though 
Though I must admit, both Mont Blanc and his brother have proven more useful than I would ever have dared to imagine. When it comes to usefulness, I am first in the field. Or was it furriest in the field? Would you like to feel my fur, Kupo? What? He's coming on to you, man. <laughs> and you wonder why Ramza despises you so, brother. They all they do all the work, and all you do is jest, Kupo. Ah, but you are mistaken, Hurdy. I bear neither you nor your brother any ill will. Any further ill will, that is. If anything, I owe you my thanks for your recent contributions. Yeah, she's suspicious. Is thanks? Are you hearing what I'm hearing? What happened to the venom spitting adder we all used to know and hate? I almost certainly seems pleased with the change, but forgive me for not buying into the, this all too convenient transformation. I'm gonna talk about him like he's right, not right there, like. <laughs> Simply showing the world that Evilus actually existed will not validate the claims chronicled in the Jurai papers. That is correct, Father. The key lies with Ramja Biol Biolvi. What? If we can find evidence of his hidden role in history, it will prove Orin's testimony true and safeguard our family name from ridicule. Which is why I turned the focus of my research to Delita's forgotten companion and his actions during the War of the Lions. It was only then I discovered something most intriguing, an underlying struggle with an unknown force. A force with the power to bring about calamitous ruin. Uh-oh. Orosite. The twisted abominations we encountered in both Lasalia and Gog, the Lukavi, they are born of these unholy crystals. While nobles of the north and south squabbled over Evilus's crown, Ramza silently sought to rid the world of a darker evil. Evil manifest from the deepest desires of men and women whose minds had fallen prey to the Orosite. And with each confrontation did Ramza's fellowship grow smaller. Countless companions lost to a cause that would go unwritten, yet as far more important than any clash of armies, and so did they endure until reaching their final destination, the Orban Monastery. Oh. <laughs> I suddenly remembered where we're going. Oh, I know this one. The Orban Monastery is where Princess Ovelia was raised. There's a scene about it in the Zodiac Brave story. After Delita emerged victorious in his final campaign, he married the princess to legitimize his claim to the throne of Evilus. Ah, I see someone has been paying attention. But I don't understand. Why would Ramja's crusade against the Lukavi take him back there? According to the Jurai papers, the sinister being who er, engendered the Orosite was said to have slumbered beneath the monastery. But who or what would have the means to create something so powerful? Ultima, the High Seraph. Ooh. A seraph? Er, what's a seraph? Seraphs are believed by some to be servants of the gods, divine beings whose only purpose is to carry out the will of their immortal masters. As to whether or not Ultima can claim this title, however, I cannot say. Just as there were those who chose to worship Ultima and her otherworldly might, there were equally as many who feared the visitor and her deadly magics, oft referring to her as the Angel of Blood, for the carnage left in her wake. Interesting. What if the spell Vesper claims to have experienced in the Praetorium, coincidentally also called Ultima, was in fact an Alagon interpretation of the very magics introduced to Hydaelyn by the High Seraph? Whoa, you're <laughs> you're getting you're crossing all my wires here. I, I can't. But what would that mean? Or, or but that would mean what would that mean? I have spoken with several colleagues back in Charlian regarding their opinions on an ancient incantation, and while they have yet, or th while they yet have little to show for their research, they all agree on one thing: the manner in which Ultima etherically manifests should not be possible, at least on Hydaelyn. So it would naturally make sense if we discovered that the Alagons learned their spell from a being not of this dimensional plane, as to exactly how they convinced the 
uh, the being to impart that knowledge unto them. Out of this plane? What manner of creature are we talking about here? Something from the void, or...? Oh, hey, Sid. Likely one similar to Omega. Well, then, have you been listening from the shadows, my friend? Long enough. I'm here to deliver the item Makoto requested. Sid, there is no need for you to deliver it personally. A Moogle would have sufficed. A Moogle? And trust that he won't tear open the package and show it to some random adventurer? No, this was far too important. If you two do not mind, the principal was about to tell us how to find the Oribon Monastery. Would that I could. You don't know? Then what have we been doing here? At ease, Lady Murilla. The Durai papers speak of a cataract situated on the river Zertchel, several leagues southeast of Rabinaster. There supposedly lies the monastery. Zertchel is not a name you will find on any modern Damascan map. Rivers, however, especially ones as large as, large as the Zertchel, is established to be... Uh, uh, are rare in an, a nation more than half claimed by the sand. The river we seek can only be that which besects Golmor and the Nagian border. How do you know all this? And for that invaluable information, we owe thanks to our brothers Mughal. Their travels have made them veritable authorities on Damascan geography. Wait, but earlier you claimed you didn't know the monastery's whereabouts. I'm confused. Its location is not what concerns me, but perhaps the Mughal themselves should explain. Why, certainly. That verdant valley of vines and vipers to where we must voyage next is home to the Viera, and therein lies our little problem. The one thing the Viera do not suffer is trespassers, not even lovable Mugo, Mughals, Kupo. Our glamours kept us hidden long enough to see the jungle was teeming with ruins much like those we've discovered in Lasalia and Gaug, but the Viera trackers eventually found us and took us before their elders. We barely escaped with our palms, Kupo. So that is why we are still here talking instead of bound for the border. There are Viera who have spurned the strict code of their tribes, abandoning their people to come and live in the cities of Dalmasca. Finding and recruiting one to our cause might provide us with insight into how to reach the Orbone Monastery ruins. Unfortunately, the nation's current turmoil has not made it easy to accomplish this task. We still require more time. Before boarding the shuttle here, I was stopped by a bonga on the docks. He asked me if I knew a Vesper Valentina and bid I deliver her a message. I told him he was welcome to accompany me to the Prima Vista so that he might deliver that message himself, but the man refused. Makoto, I saw this device crafted to your exact specifications, but cannot guarantee that it will function as intended, seeing as I had nary a subject to test it on. Of course, Master Sid. If any trouble is met, then most likely it is my design that is to blame. What'd she make there? Your confidence in my craftsmanship is flattering, but you sell yourself short too, my dear. Here's to your success. Good day. Wait, can I know what the message is? Did we- <laughs> Did he not even tell us the message, or...? Man, that was a lot of information all at once. My head is spinning. Alright, um... Oh god. Makoto. I sense that you are interested in the package Sid delivered. I have every intention to apprise you of its contents, but first I believe we should speak of Alma's condition. Do you not find her illness all too timely? Genemis and Ramja would like to believe that her bouts of vertigo are not but a result of mind fatigued. But the answer is clear, it is the aura sight that plagues her. 
Alma recently confided in me that she would hear her father speaking with o the odious well before even his first foray into Rebanaster. However, I do not think this entirely true, which is not to imply that Alma is trying to deceive us. Rather, I think she saw something that led her to believe her father was conversing with the Orosite. Moreover, I suspect it was the Orosite itself that granted her this vision. You recall my hypothesis on distinct frequency NRR type harmonic vibrations and their tendency to promote ethereal amplification. Here we go. Or when I mentioned that despite being in the principal's possession for an extended period, the Odious exhibited none of the imprinting present in the Duma. No? The Odious has never resonated with Genomus. It, was always, it has always been his wife's pendant and its orosite shard, the Virgo, that fueled his passion for Evilus. No, the Odious is bound to Alma's deepest desires, whatever those may be. The only reasons I can fathom that Alma has not fallen victim to the Orosite's grasp is that her desires are not as strong as those we have witnessed in Argath or Begonlin. That and the ethereal interference caused by other nearby shards. I have explained all of this to Alma and recommended that she destroy the necklace, yet not only did she refuse, but she begged me to keep this revelation from her father. And so I did the only thing I could. I devised a means in which I might impede, or at least lessen, the effects of the odious. This device, while still incomplete, will amplify the NRR wavelengths emitted by the Virgo. This should work to interfere with those emitted by the odious, thereby shielding Alma from the brunt of their effect. The city below is all abuzz with word of Bangan brigand loitering about the airship landing. You think it could be someone we know, Koopo? Yeah, it, it, they said we had a he had a message for us. Really? <laughs> um, what is this one? Do we get something cool from this? Making bacon. I'm mad. <laughs> Making bacon. Is that a cooking one? Making bacon. Uh, boggy. Apologies, Vesper, but I needed to speak with you, and you alone. Oh, don't mind me, Koopa. I'll just be floating over here in perfect earshot. Why, you- What makes you think I won't lay you low right here, right now? Because we're here to offer you a proposition, that's what. We need information on the Golmore jungle, and thought a man as well-traveled as you might be persuaded to provide some. Golmore? You of all creatures should know that a Viera- That is Viera land. What are you offering, then? Why, the opportunity to tell us what you know. Genomus believes our next adventure lies beneath the jungle canopy, Koopo. Uh, I should have expected as much. Very well. Vesper, I came to ask if you would meet someone. Now it seems that someone may be able to assist Genomus as well. Seeing as you and the principal did right by us before, I do not see a reason why I cannot take both of you. Okay, talk to him again. Let me know when you are ready to depart for Rabin Aster. We will travel in our airship. The Prima Vista would draw too much unwanted attention. Yep, I'm ready. Wait, are we going to meet who I think we're going to meet? I forgot that was this expansion. We are. Oh my god. My girlfriend. <laughs> I guess I don't remember this being this expansion. Maybe because I only did it in uh, Shadowbringer. Back to a life of brigandry in the clouds, are we? Of course not. Not that it didn't cross our minds, but when faced with the decision of what to do next, we needed simply to remember the dying words of our leader. Gaidric, Renek, and I decided to re-enlist as Dalmascan Fusiliers. Oh, cool. And the occupying Garleans actually said yes, Kupo? Not exactly. We're now with the resistance. You no doubt heard of the uprising in Domasco that followed the Doman liberation, and how it was crushed under the iron heel of the... Fourth Legion? 
head to think, yes. The resistance leaders were captured, tortured, and publicly executed. Yet much to the emperor Empire's chagrin, the gruesome display only served to further rally the survivors. Remove one head and two, gr two grow back in its place. Remove two and then there are four. A person can die, but an ideal will live on. Now there exist several factions throughout Dalmasca. We belong to one known as Lenti's Tears. And when we told our commanding officer of our recent crossing with you and yours, she simply insisted that we introduce you. We are going to see her. <laughs> me, 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 but I wasn't even supposed to be here, Kubo. Not you, Hairball. Her. Meet with the general and hear her proposal, Vesper. If you are not interested, we shall return to return you to Gugane unharmed. You have our. Uh oh. Hmm. Curl got your tongue. Rebanaster dead ahead, lads. Wait, why do you why do you cut himself off? He doesn't doesn't want to make a promise. I forget what happens. <laughs> I know who we're going to meet though, for sure. Ah, oh, beautiful. Wonder if we're all, we'll ever um Come back here. I'm really curious where the game's gonna go after Endwalker. Like, I love it. I, I'm gonna love Endwalker. I know. It's gonna wrap up the Zodiac and Heidelin story. It's gonna be great. But what happens next? This way, we've many moms to cover before nightfall. They've said a new story starts, so that's, that's gonna be fantastic. But I wanna know what it is. I'm excited for who we're about to meet. There she is. <laughs> I love her so much. I've done as asked. I bring you the Liberator. And here I thought she'd be taller. Bran! I knew it! A Viera! I am Fran, proud daughter of Dalmasca and general of Lente's Tears. And yes, Moogle, I am Aviera. Are you surprised? I wish I could do her voice, because that was a great voice in that game. Why, yes, in fact, I am. Her kind are all supposed to be living amongst the trees, having shunned contact with the outer world, Kupo. There are supposedly a few who have left their homes, but I most certainly did not expect to see one here in this sewer. Indeed. This Banga claims you see Gorbone. Does he speak true? Those ruins lie deep within the Golmore jungle, a place most sacred to my sisters. They would take great offense were you to defile it with your presence. What is more, Foggy tells me you travel with Garleans, openly aiding those who would see our nation burn. How can we place our trust in one who would do such? Uh, mm. This seems really aggressive. Genomis and his family defected long ago. They are not your enemy. A Garlean is a Garlean. Their pathetic attempt at absolution only proves their past guilt. You misunderstand. Kind Genomis does not approve of the Emperor's warmongering. He wants to help Dalmasca and its impoverished masses, Kupo. And what would a Moogle know about my people? Does your blood run Dalmask and Red? We could cut you open and find out. General, there is no need for threats. You are right, Boggy. Let us then parlay. Parlay? Parlay. First, the resistance requires men. Men and women from Doma and the Orazine Alliance to join us in ridding Dalmasca of its Imperial invaders. Your past deeds have made you well known to the leaders of both. They will listen to you, or if not, they will listen to these scions to which you claim allegiance. Second, the resistance requires gold. Gold to strengthen our forces from within. 
Your allies are in bed with the East Eldernod Trading Company, which continues its dealings with Garlemald even as you raise your sword against them, profiting from the Empire's rampant aggression. As targets of that aggression, I believe my people are entitled to a portion of those profits. Grant me these simple things, and I shall personally guide you safely to the ruins of Orban. And what of the Lexan tales? See me to victory, and I'll take the Emperor himself. Those are my conditions. What say you? Um... Promise me first my companions will see no harm. I will promise you nothing, but if it helps you sleep, know that I have never cut down a man who did not take up arms against me and mine, but he Garlean, be he Garlean or Eorzean. I say we have our work cut out for us, Kupo. Wagi, you and the Fusiliers are to accompany the Liberator. I expect a detailed report on how my demands are received. Yes, General. Alright. Bye, girlfriend. <laughs> I love her. Not that I expect them to be taken seriously. You are a fool to trust them, Princess. But here's the real question. As much as I love Fran, where's Balthier? <laughs> that, that, that would be just great. Okay, Mont Blanc. What an adventure, Koopo. Just think, by tomorrow, we could all be the newest members of the Dalmascan Resistance. Or, not that I am ready to give up my place on the Prima Vista just yet. Hurry, hurry. If I don't tell someone of our adventure quick, I'll positively burst, Koopo. Okay, what are we doing? Speak to Ramja. Okay. Let me- oh, get out of here. Yes. This woman asks much of us. The Viera have ever been wary of outsiders. For centuries, their many tribes have remained hidden in the jungles, content with their self-imposed solitude. Each tribe has its own strict code and will met swift punishment to any who would defy these laws. As such, many of Viera will spend her entire life bound to the territory of her ancestors, both unwilling and unable to venture beyond its borders. And while the tribes are wholly independent, they have agreed to uphold the single standard. Shun all contact with the outside world unless it is to protect the jungle. That said, with every generation, there are those Viera who long for a life beyond the verdant sea of trees and abandon their tribes to start a new life in the kingdom's cities. My guess is that this Fran is one such individual. Who also happens to be the only individual we know who can guide us to the monastery, Kupo. It seems Vesper's sword arm won't be enough to see us through this predicament. She'll need to don the right mantle of a diplomat if we're to convince the Alliances and the East Eldernod Trading Company to grant us aid. What could go wrong? what that is back there. Yes, yes, I know you said not to call unless it was urgent, but this is urgent. Alright, not exactly, but my superiors have come to a decision on your request. I thought you might want to hear what they had to say. Oh, and let me preempt any request for immediate disclosure with a reminder that the information is much too sensitive to discuss over Link Pearl. Meet me, sorry. <coughs> I was coughing. Meet me at the Ruby Bazaar post haste and I shall duly apprise you of their judgment. Okay. Well then, Vesper, what are we waiting for?
I've read about how you united the whole of Eorzea under a single standard and convinced the Holy See to end a thousand year conflict. Compared to that, asking for a few soldiers and a coffer of three a coffer or three of gill should be a piece of rollin' berry cake. I suppose we should inform Bwagi down at Kagani Landing of our progress. He mentioned he was to keep an eye on us. Okay. Um Can I get one of these? <laughs> Can I have those? Alright, let's uh get out of here. Oh, hey Boggy. So you have an answer from East Aldernar already. Impressive. It would seem the Lady Fran has underestimated your influence amongst the realm's players. I assume you have no objections to me joining you then. Uh, can I get out of here? Alright, he wanted to meet... At, was it at the Ruby Bazaar? I think so. Oh, oh yeah, good. <laughs> okay. Murilla! Hancock awaits us in the bazaar. Shall we, Vesper? Yes. A lovely lady and a banga. And here I was expecting you would be alone, Vesper. Ah, but excuse my manners. I am Hancock, representative of the East Aldernod Trading Company, assigned to oversee her assets here in Kugane. It is a pleasure to meet you. Who... who is that entered? Ah! And I am Yugiri. We apologize for making you come all this way. Not that it is far from the landing to... Ahem. <laughs> Wagi, was it? I serve Lord Hian, rightful ruler of Doma. I have come bearing my lord's reply to your entreaty. And I am Tataru Taru of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I'm only here seeing as no one else could be bothered. Well, that and to bear a message from the leaders of the Eorzean Lions. <clears throat> Thank you both for coming. I am Boagi, formerly of the Dalmascan Royal Fusiliers. I now claim allegiance to Lente's Tears, a resistance group seeking to accomplish what you have done in Doma and Alamigo. What tidings have you brought us? Allow me to begin then. While the East Eldernod Trading Company sympathizes with your plight, we are not in a position to grant you the funding you seek. Uh oh. As you are aware, the East Aldernod Trading Company prides itself in its neutrality, be it in matters political or personal. And what of our relationship with the Orizin Alliance? Ah, yes. What I meant to say was here in Hingashi. The East Aldernod Trading Company prides itself in its neutrality. Be it in matters political and, er, we must understand our position. Simply supplying coin to any one group would make it appear that we somehow favor that group over another. Seeing as we conduct business openly and fairly with everyone, doing such would be sending the wrong message and ultimately harm profits. Yes. And by selling to both sides, you maximize profits while good men and women perish. How convenient. We are a business, milady, and we do what we must to survive. That does not mean, however, we are blind to the needs of our customers or our allies, which is why we support the Orzean Alliance and their noble efforts to safeguard their realm's freedom through a mutually beneficial arrangement. 
If it were my choice, I would provide your little resistance with all the funding it needs. But as my good friend Vesper knows all too well, it is not my choice. Well, now that Hancock's thoroughly really lowered your spirits, you won't be as crestfallen when I inform you the Eorzean Alliance will also be unable to provide any assistance. And let me guess, you did everything in your power to try and convince the leaders of each city-state, only to watch as they politely declined our proposal, claiming an unfortunate lack of intelligence or resources. <laughs> Wait, how did you... Lord Hian sends his greeting to you and yours, and under nor normal circumstances would welcome allies still suffering under the Imperial yoke. However, word has it that the latest attempt at reclaiming your kingdom ended in failure, resulting in the loss of countless lives, including many of the Resistance's leaders. You are not mistaken. Our army is not what it once was. Those remaining have been forced to take refuge deep beneath the cities or the streets of Rabanaster. The Fourth Legion has already defeated you once. Lacking unity and leadership, the current resistance will not survive another tilt against the Empire's disciplined ranks. If Doma is to join hands with Dalmasca as an ally, you must first prove to us that you will stand as one. Doma, as a full-fledged ally, would serve far better to strengthen our cause than a few temporary soldiers. Yet, even if we were able to wrest Dalmasca from the Empire's grasp, without unity amongst your people, the resulting chaos would prove more perilous to the Kingdom. You understand much of our situation. And based on that understanding, you would refuse your aid to Lente's tears, am I correct? Do not mistake me. Lord Hian's refusal is but a message. A message to help you plan your next step. You have a wise master. He understands that without proper planning, driving one enemy from your midst simply creates room for the next. Lady Fran will no doubt be pleased to hear that your response was exactly as she expected. <laughs> He's laughing. You knew this whole time that your demands would be rejected, yet still you let us farce play out? You have my apologies, but this was all necessary to prove an important point to our leader. Hmm. They're just gonna leave just like that, huh? <laughs> Lady Fran needed to show the princess just exactly what she was getting herself into, and your honesty today will serve us better than any hollow promise. Thank you. Wait, what about the Gulmore jungle? Yeah, what the heck, man? Can you believe this? We're right back where we started. Principal Genomus will not be pleased. Bye, Hancock. <laughs> He's just like, bye, see you later. Well, that didn't work out in our favor. Alright, we go back here. Then we go up here. That's a cool sword that he's got there. Alright, let's get back onto the ship here and see what how this plays out, I suppose. 
If it is as you say, it is most unfortunate. But I suppose we did everything in our power, and that is all one could ask. I still do not understand. Why would Lady Fran send Vesper on this wild Paisa chase if she knew from the start it would be for naught? Quaggy mentioned something about Fran proving a point to their leader, whomever that may be. People in positions of power can prove both naive and stubborn creatures. Simply telling a leader she is wrong may not convince her of the fact. Seeing one's own plan fail, however, is off the best medicine. Naive and stubborn? Then their resistance is doomed. If a person is a, as imposing as Fran is taking orders from her, then chances are this leader is even worse, Kupo. I would not be so certain, Mont Blanc. My guess is that the individual in question is still quite young and inexperienced, and that Lady Fran is trying to teach her to be an effective leader through example. By allowing her to make her own mistakes, Fran is granting her the ability to learn and grow from them, an experience that will ultimately benefit her when the time comes to make some truly difficult decisions. Now, I seem to recall reading that one of the many faces of the resistance before the recent quelling was a young girl of royal blood. Do you suppose? You may cease with your baseless presumptions, defector. Fran! The door was open. <laughs> Bloggy, please. And you would be? I would be here on orders from the leader of Lente's Tears, against my better judgment, mind you. Greetings. Lady Fran, I presume. I am Genomus Sen Lexentail, principal of the Majestic Theater Company. You and your colleagues are most welcome on the Prima Vista. What is it your leader would have of us? While you failed in meeting even a single of our demands, she recognizes that you are sincere in your attempts to see them fulfilled. And for that effort, you are to be compensated. That is most generous. Compensated with what? Whoa, Fran went double. <laughs> the ruins which you seek are hidden behind a waterfall here, a point roughly equidistant from the river's source and its delta. You have our thanks, Lady Fran. We will not forget this kindness. Father, I shall plot a course immediately. Ramza, what is going on here? Elma, you should be in bed. I've slept enough, brother. Tell me, who are our guests? It appears you once again prepared to leap in danger's maw. Keep your wits about you, Vesper. Lady Fan is strong, but then again, so was Bagannon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if you'll excuse me. Are you mad? A trip to the surface in your condition? Listen to me, brother. The High Seraph beckons. She speaks to me through the odious. The what? There's no need to worry. Makoto and I have already devised a plan. I can help clear our family name. The Charlian has no say in this. I am your father and I insist you remain here on the airship. What would your mother say if I allowed aught to befall you? Mother! That is what this is all about, isn't it? What it has always been about. You care not about Evilis or the Orin name. No, you only seek to use the Orisite to bring Mother back. Dang, dude. But you haven't been able to do that. You still do not understand how exactly it is that the shards translate one's desires into reality. That is where I can help. I can ask the High Seraph. It is she who created the Orisite. Ultima has bid me come to her place of imprisonment. If we free her, she will reveal it unto us the secrets of her creations. Dude, that sounds like a trap, man. Do you even hear what you're saying, Alma? Even if there was the slightest chance of bringing Mother back, we cannot risk your life in doing so. Right? <laughs> yeah, there go. Your brother is right. We have sacrificed too much already. I cannot bear the thought of losing you. Either of you. 
It is too late. Blah, Elma's gone bad. Oh no. I'm so lonely, father. Why must you love Ramza more than you do me? Do not be cozoned or cozened by your daughter's words, for they are not her own. No, no. God's forfend. I told you, no one can control the power of those shards. No one. Vesper, here, take this. It might be the only thing that can save Alma, but we must hurry to the monastery. Come, we leave for the Golmar jungle, now. I mean, is their dad a, like any sort of father at all? Like, <laughs> he just stood back. It didn't say a word about any of that. Like, I, I, I don't know, I really dislike their dad. Have I your permission to depart, Vesper? Every moment we tarry here, my sister, she... Of course. Then hold on, I've set engines to full speed. Oh, we're actually going now. <laughs> okay, fine. I don't quite remember the raid here, but I, I feel like I liked it. Up until a point, maybe? <laughs> Welcome to the land of my people. Twould be a poor lie if I said I did not miss it some. Help me. Emma. Be gone! Oh dang. Alma! Ramja! Right here at his arm. Blood of the invokers, fulfill the ancient covenant and grant unto me the vessel promised. Uh oh. Really, just like that, huh? What just... Woggy to me. The girl is not well. Uh, might I suggest we continue this back at the Prima Vista, Kupo? So now Rounds is in trouble, like... Uh oh. Have you the courage to face true evil?
What are you gopping at? The ship is this way, Koopo. Huh. <laughs> that was a quick turn of events there. Yeah, how do you feel about your children? Huh? Now Ramsha is gone? Oh dearest Tia, what have I done? What have I done? Ooh. Elma's theme, staff credits. <laughs> we need to do something, but what recourse is left to us? The only means we had of protecting ourselves could not even prevent my son from... My son from... Yeah. I'm sorry, Genomis. My design was flawed. Not necessarily, Charlian. We all saw how it succeeded in drawing Alma back from the rift and shattering the odious. The loss of the boy is not yours to bear. Our focus here should not be on our failures, but what we have learned from them. The being beyond the rift it spoke before claiming Ramja. It referred to you as the blood of its invokers. Could it be your ancestors are responsible for Ultima's summoning? Oh, certainly not. I've discovered no such inf inference anywhere in the Jirai papers. Besides, Tales of the High Seraph existed far before even the earliest of Evolution legends. Then who exactly did summon Ultima, and why does she think them your kin? Uh-oh. Look! I have a bad feeling about this, Koopo. Maybe take that off of her? Ruh -ruh. <laughs> Time for an echo. Wow, it's a far back echo. Ramja's dead? You lie about as well as you carry yourself in battle, Orin. I did not say he was dead, my lord Delita. Merely that he had abandoned his mortal vessel, entrusting his ethereal soul to the Orosite. But why would he do such a thing? Peace has finally come to Evilis. There is not to be had from further sacrifice. The kingdom is won, and this victory is as much his as it is mine. He risked life and limb to shield me from the dark that would have seen me perish. Without him, I would not be standing here before you. It is my duty as both king and colleague to see him saved. Knights, to me! We ride for Orobon! My lord, wait! Ajora Glabados, first of the Zodiac Braves, was not the hero the church would have you believe. He betrayed Mother Hydaelyn for the promise of coin and power. Summoning forth a terrible evil from the depths of the celestial abyss. It was believed only one of the lands chosen, only a warrior of light, might stand against this threat. Yet while victorious in battle, Ramja was unable to see the darkness vanquished. If failure, if failure was all that awaited our warrior of light, then what chance do you presume any other might stand? Are you saying I should do nothing, then? No, my lord. Ramza is. My brother's final wish before he surrendered to the Aether was that his name be struck from the annals of history. Alma, you're unhurt. But I was led to believe none but Orin returned from Morbone. What is this you speak of your brother's wishes? When it became apparent that we were powerless to truly defeat the High Seraph, we chose the only path left to us, to do what Hydaelyn herself did countless centuries past, imprison Ultima. And as you are aware, my lord, a prison is only as strong as the seal on its gates.
Ramso sacrificed his body to ensure that the Angel of Blood would never again walk the land, and he believed that if people knew of this sacrifice, it would only inspire them to seek out the Holy Stones and repeat the mistakes of those come before. If you truly avouch yourself his friend, then you will honor this, his final plea. No, Ramja should not be forgotten. He should be raised up as a hero for his deeds and claim his rightful place at my side. Only he might be my knight gallant. Or gallant, probably. He is gone, my lord. Before Ramzo was your friend, before he was my brother, he was a warrior of light. He did what he did for Hydaelyn, and for those who would one day, too, heed the crystal's call. Mm. Claim the throne, my friend. Become ruler of Evilis and restore peace to this war-torn realm once and for all. Wait, Ramja, don't leave me! Please, I beg of you! You will make a fine and just king, Delita. See you do not stray from that path. Ramja. Oh, that's kind of, that's pretty sad. The stones in these two necklaces, you are certain they will guide the heroes of a new era to Ramja. Is what Ramja wished, my lord. Oran, I do not believe I can bear another farewell this day. Will you not reconsider my offer to remain as a member of my court? It is but a matter of time before the cardinal and his temple knights grow wise to my past. I would not have my presence here implicate you as well. Ramja beseeched me strike his name from history, but like you, my lord, I could not bear the thought of future generations blind to the truth. As such, I pen this chronicle of the hero's journeys. I fear the world, however, is not yet ready for the gospel contained within these pages, nor would the church ever allow its circulation. In fact, I believe they will confiscate every existing copy and lock them away in their library. And what better way for the words to remain forever preserved than in one of the most highly guarded vaults in all the realm? Then one day, when the church has fallen out of favor, the chronicle will be discovered and truth shall prevail. I must admit, your plan is intriguing, Oran, but once the church learns it was you who penned the chronicle, your life... Aw, oh, he knows. Preggers? She looks like she's 12. That um, um, is awkward. Vesper. Twas the echo, wasn't it? The removal of Ramza's name from the history books, the Jurai papers, the pendants. It was all set in motion by Oren himself. 
And if the Liberator's visions are to be taken as fact, it also appears we now know what the High Seraph meant by blood of my invoker. She was not speaking of ancestors in the sense of actual kin, but the line of those chosen by Hydaelyn to serve her as warriors of light. But then why abduct Ramja, or even Alma, unless there's something you haven't been telling us? She was using us to lure Vesper. It is her vessel the High Seraph desires. Matron's teats! <laughs> Alma, how long have you been awake? Uh, I've been a fool. I told our leader that it did not matter if our request for aid was refused, for I had an alternative ploy. General? It's alright, Boggy. My intention was to claim one of these aura site in the name of the Resistance and use its power to lay waste to the Garlean occupants. Only now do I realize how flawed my ambitions were. You mean this whole time you were playing us for fools? Why didn't we see it earlier? Never trust a woman with ears longer than mine, I always say. <laughs> You've every right to be angry, and I apologize for misleading you. But believe me, I no longer have any desire to deceive you and yours. I shall see you to the Orbon Monastery and ask not in return, but that you let me join you in your rescue of Ramza. Okay. Do not misunderstand me. I do- I do not do this for any one of you. I do it for my people in both Gomor and Rebanaster. People who may die if this High Seraph is allowed to re allowed to return to power. Makes sense. So can we go to the monastery now? Okay. <laughs> Well, obviously, we're not going to do that <laughs> this episode. Uh, I knew this would take a while, but my god, it's like an hour we've been at this quest. Alright, so what we'll do in the next episode, then, is head into the monastery. Um, what are you doing over here? What's happening with this group right here? Company Muscle, Tragedian, Tragedian, Dancer, Musician, it is. Wow, look at you, uh, look at your very limber right there. <laughs> okay. Alright, yeah, we will go ahead and, um, end this episode here. And when we come back, we'll head into the monastery. So guys, I want to thank you so much for all of your support on this series. If you do want to see more of the Final Fantasy XIV online Let's Play, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Alright, bye everyone.